let's take a look at how to use the graduation plan checklist that's been designed for students. In the student portal on the graduation plan page, you'll see the informational videos such as this one at the top. And then below that, you'll see graduation plan checklist. Now there is a sheet embedded. And if you notice, there's a box with a little arrow up in the upper right. If you tap that, it will actually allow you to look at the sheet but just view it, not make changes to it. What you want to do is come down to where it says click here to make your own copy. When you click here, a page will open that looks like this. When you hit the blue button to make a copy, it will generate your own copy. It will look something like this. This has been opened up in the Chrome browser. We want to actually take a look at it in the Google Sheets app. So here is the graduation plan checklist for students. Let's just take a look at how we can go about uh, filling this out and tracking our graduation requirements. Uh, first of all, the student name. I'm just going to go ahead and put my name in that box. Student ID goes in the box next to student ID. And let's put sophomore for grade level. Now, when you start working on this graduation plan tracking your credits, when you check the box next to yes, it will put that day's date in there so you'll automatically have the day that you started tracking your plan. Now, Graduation requirement number one for your current credits. Take a look here. We have a line that's going to track how many credits you've earned total, how many you've earned in ninth grade, tenth grade, and eleventh so that you can make sure when you finish your senior year you're above that 21 credit minimum. The way that this works as you look at your transcript in Home Access Center uh, since we put down uh, this um, example as a sophomore, let's go to English 1. Let's say that the student in ninth grade earned credit first and second semester. You can see that that's going to give me one credit earned. If I use the drop down menus and put for English 1, which is a freshman class, that I earned both those credits there, that will then fill in the box telling me how many I've earned in ninth grade. Let's say that I also earned first semester Algebra 1 and also second semester Algebra 1. So now we're up to two credits. Remember, you have your English, your math, your science, and social studies at the top, along with health and physical education. You do need five elective credits total. Because everyone takes different electives, the course names are not listed in there. Let's say that one class that I took was a music class. And so I'm going to go ahead and check that in first semester. Of my freshman year I earned credit there that'll give me that half credit from first semester so each year as you continue to track these credits you'll have a good idea am I on track am I earning the credits that I need to get to that all-important 21 or beyond now requirement number two showing competency there are some different areas um, that you can choose from in fact there are four total and so we have things like passing algebra one uh, and English 2 and of course exams, completing two career focused activities, you can see the list there, enlisting in the US Armed Services or earning college credit in math and English. So let's say that I want to use, I plan to use and of course exams in Algebra 1. Now in this case if I'm only in my sophomore year I wouldn't have that end of course exam for English 2 yet. But Let's say in Algebra 1 I earned a 700 which is above that 684 and by the end of my sophomore year, let's say that I earn a 710, I can go ahead and check the box. It will turn green. That gives me one out of the four competencies that I must complete. Down at the bottom, you'll see graduation requirement number three. This has to do with earning your seals. And so you can, just like in section two, you can check the ones that you plan to use and the ones that are completed. Now remember, for these seals, you must complete two total. And so if you look through those, and let's say, for example, uh, one of them you plan to use is the student engagement seal, where you participate in two activities or seasons. So you put that you plan to use that. Once you've completed those two, you can also check that off. But remember, three of those seals are local, such as the student engagement, fine and performing arts, community service, only one of your two can come from that uh, local section. One of the other ones has to come from the top, those nine at the top. Now, uh, in addition to that, there are some other tabs at the bottom. 
the attendance and discipline review. Uh, this is when you do a check-in, just like before, when you check the box, the date that you check in will come up. This is where you'll go over your days absent, days tardy, and if there's any discipline referrals. And then the last one, if needed, if your counselor determines you need an at-risk plan, uh, you can check yes there, the date that the plan was created along with check-ins, and this is where you will make some goals along with steps, actionable steps to meet those goals and list the adults who are helping you monitor, and later on a check-in, decide if progress is being made or not. So the purpose of our graduation plan checklist is for you as a student to have some action and to have some uh, involvement in your course toward graduation and to make sure that there are no surprises as you get through each of the school years working toward the end of your senior year and earning over 21 credits.